Hello, thank you for joining us for this overview of district planning for CT SEDS. This session is being conducted by the RESC Alliance in partnership with the Connecticut State Department of Education, Bureau of Special Education. CT SEDS is the new state-sponsored web-based IEP and data collection system that will become the single statewide special education platform for all school districts, RESCs, magnet and charter schools in private special education facilities as of July 1, 2022. CT SEDS will launch the new IEP form as well as other important data collection modules for your district to be discussed later in this presentation. Connecticut has made tremendous progress since 2000 moving forward with a state mandated IEP form and subsequent digitized systems to support that work. Over the past two years, the department has been working diligently to engage stakeholders in the design of the new IEP format and with a new partner, PCG, to build a customized and adaptive IEP platform and data collection system. This has been and will continue to be an important priority of the Bureau of Special Education as we look to improve upon the strong foundation of excellent work being done in our state on behalf of students with disabilities and their families. But with any new system or large-scale change, there will be some challenges with implementation. The system is being built as we speak, so there may be some questions you have of the system we are unable to answer at this time. However, today's session is designed to assist you in your planning for the rollout of the new system over the next year. If we all work together, we will deploy this state-of-the-art system as seamlessly as possible. Our objectives for today include one, the importance of each district understanding what they need to do to prepare for the rollout of the new system within and throughout your district. This will require some dedicated resources such as time and personnel at the local level. Two, to understand what training opportunities are available to you, by who and when, including the difference between the IEP quality training sessions and the user proficiency training for CT SEDS. Three, to help you prioritize who needs to be trained and when. Four, to gather information from you on questions and need for resources to be shared with the department for future planning and resource allocation. So let's get started. Let's start with the refresher on the purpose of CT SEDS. As we have said, the purpose is to develop one statewide web-based special education IEP and data management system. The system will include the newly designed IEP document. Just to mention a few highlights, it will provide for student-specific and aggregate reports and will assist with the collection of data that meets state and federal reporting requirements. Furthermore, it will reduce some of the paperwork and reporting burden at the local level as the CSDE will be able to pull data directly for certain reporting requirements. The system will allow you to control who has different levels of access to student data and will also allow parents password protected access to data on their child through a parent portal. Some of the features of CT SEDS include tracking of referral and evaluation timelines, annual and triennial review dates, and progress monitoring and reporting. The system will document the need for supplementary aids and services for both instruction and statewide testing including alternate assessment eligibility. You will be able to use the system to track the delivery of services, which is necessary for Medicaid billing. The system has a document repository for evaluation reports and supporting materials. The statewide system will facilitate the transfer of student records from district to district. Other highlights include district capability to run data reports and direct access for CSDE to run state and federal reporting thus eliminating the district responsibility to upload data into the current CDAC system. Some additional features of CT SEDS include the data notification reports from the Office of Early Childhood regarding children enrolled in the Birth to Three system, as well as the required annual data reporting on early childhood outcomes. Additional modules in the system include surrogate parent program, restraint seclusion, due process, and excess cost grant processing. These will allow integration with the primary data modules 
an opportunity for communication and data reporting related to each of these functions. CTSEDS will also have a secure parent portal which will allow parents and guardians to access their child's IEP and supporting documentation. In addition to the IEP and data reporting functions of the system, there will be additional modules available to you at no cost. The Section 504 and Services Plan module is expected in July 2022 rollout and will be required. The Gifted and Talented module will be rolled out later. Once the initial launch is complete, this module will not be optional once it is available. The CSDE will be funding a multi-tiered System of Support, or MTSS, module that will be available later. This module will be optional, but recommended to integrate intervention and progress monitoring data that may impact referral, eligibility, and IEP implementation. Districts will have the discretion to determine when and if they would like to transition from their current MTSS data collection system to using CTSEDS for this purpose. Now let's stop and see what questions you have so far. The next segment of our presentation will focus on the training, data migration, and communication to stakeholders. Let's start with training. The CSCE has partnered with American Institutes for Research, AIR, and a broad stakeholder group to design training to improve the quality of IEPs. The training consists of synchronous training on IEP quality and progress monitoring, which will be delivered in eight 90-minute sessions or in two day sessions in person. There will also be five self-paced asynchronous recorded modules. The topics of the asynchronous modules are shown at the bottom of this slide and include supplementary aids and services, secondary transition, prior written notice, and pre-K considerations. The fifth module provides an overview of the IEP and the IEP development process and is designed specifically for families. It is important to know that the CSDE has identified specific staff at the RUSCs and CERC to be available to provide this training as well as to provide technical assistance to you. Let's review some of the timelines for the new system for the 21-22 school year, which includes pilot study with a stratified sample of school districts. Over the past few months, the department has been communicating with districts that volunteered to participate in pilot training and at pilot testing of certain functions of CT SEDS. Feedback data from the pilot study will help further inform refinement of CT SEDS statewide implementation in July 2022. These pilots will receive IEP quality training this fall. CT SEDS training in January and with the actual testing of pilot cases to take place in February of 2022. Starting in January of 2022, CSDE, in collaboration with the RESCs and CERC, will make the IEP quality training available to all districts through regional sessions. The IEP quality training synchronous modules are designed to be done either virtually for eight 90-minute sessions or over two days in person. The asynchronous modules are approximately 45 minutes in length and can be accessed at any time and are self-paced. One of the asynchronous modules is specifically designed to provide parents an overview of the new IEP and background on IDEA and parental rights and safeguards. Each district will develop a plan for who will need to attend which of the trainings. As you bring on new hires in special education and related services, we recommend that they participate in the IEP quality training for onboarding to the IEP. On the action plan template you will receive at the end of this session, you will need to identify who in your district will need to participate in the IEP quality training and prioritize the schedule of participants from January 2022 through June 2023. As stated earlier, IEP quality training will open statewide starting January 2022 and at that time will only be offered virtually. Registration will be available through a centralized site and all participants will have access to the Canvas platform as the virtual training platform and resource repository. Directors will be able to access lists of staff from their district who have completed training. 
The CT SED system will become live on July 1, 2022. Training on CT SEDs, called User Proficiency Training, which is focused on system functionality, will be made available commencing in July 2022, concurrent with the launch of CT SEDs. PCG will provide user proficiency training to district identified expert trainers who will serve as in district experts and turnkey support and training on how to use and navigate CT SEDs. Only these trained CT SEDs experts will have direct access to the PCG helpline and support. Each district will be allotted a certain number of seats for CT SEDs experts to be trained by PCG. These numbers will be provided in the fall 2021 to help you plan for the CT SEDs training that will start in July 2022. The user proficiency training will include training on all of the modules available at that time, including referral, evaluation, identification, and development of the IEP and the Section 504 module. The gifted and talented and MTSS modules will be available sometime later in the 22-23 school year. Once trained by PCG, your in-district and school CT SEDS expert trainers can orient existing and new staff to CT SEDS functionality. In addition, districts will have access to RESC and CERC IEP development specialists for technical assistance. RESC and CERC training and technical assistance services related to the new IEP will be available to districts at no cost. Just a quick review of what school districts need to plan for related to CT SEDS user proficiency training. You will identify who your school and district experts should be. Most likely these will be data managers, special education director or supervisors, case managers, and support staff. These staff will train other in-district staff who will be required to use the system, including any future new hires. PCG will also be providing a series of training and support tools, brief videos, resource guides, etc. It will be important to determine how you will support users of the CT SED system over the course of the 2022-23 school year. You will be determining who has access to the system based on their role in the development or oversight of IEPs and the PPT process. Staff will need training at different points in the year, depending on when they will attend their first PPT and write their first IEP in the new system. For that reason, it is important to develop some supports for staff, particularly when they are new users of the system. This may be in the form of ongoing formal training sessions, access to PCG developed short asynchronous training videos, or access to our identified experts at the school or district level. Let's stop here and open it up for questions you have about any of the training we have discussed. Now let's move on to discuss what you need to plan for related to your current data and documents. We know many of you have asked about transferring documents and data from your current IEP data system to CT SEDS. There are two sets of data that need to be uploaded into CT SEDS. Items from your current document repository and general special education data. In spring 2022, CSDE will provide instructions on how to transfer the documents into CT SEDS starting July 2022 when the system goes live. For each student, the district will need to identify which documents currently in your document repository that you want to maintain and upload into CT SEDS. This will most likely at a minimum include current IEPs and evaluation reports. The CSDE will provide you with a master Excel spreadsheet with naming conventions for your documents to track the documents you want to upload to the new system. The district will need to identify the documents, download them from their current system, and create a PDF file that will be uploaded into the CT SEDS document repository. More instructions and the Excel spreadsheet will be coming in the summer 2021. For the required special education data on students, during the last week of the school year in June 2022, the district will be required to do a CDAC upload of every current student with an IEP you expect to return to your district in the fall of 2022. The CSDE will upload specific data points from this data into CT SEDS for you. 
CT SEDS will reduce the local data reporting burden on districts. CSDE will pull data necessary for federal and state reporting directly from CT SEDS. This capability will eliminate a variety of district data collections. Given the new capacity of the CSDE to gather the necessary data from CT SEDS, your special education data managers will take on a new role. Their role will shift from uploading data to the CSDE to running reports and monitoring compliance of timelines. We expect that your data managers will become some of your expert users in CT SEDS and will be useful in assisting staff who are new to using CT SEDS. As part of your planning process, it will be important for you to identify who the school and district experts in CT SEDS will be, including redefining the role of your special education data manager. As stated previously, the data managers will oversee the identification of records that need to be uploaded from your current document repository, maintaining the master spreadsheet, archiving the PDF documents that you want to preserve. Although the actual upload of the documents will not take place until the system is live on July 1, 2022, your data managers and staff can begin archiving documents once CSDE provides you instructions on organizing and preparing your document archive. The last area you need to consider in your rollout of CT SEDS is how you will introduce CT SEDS to your multiple stakeholders, district and school leaders, special education and general education staff, board of education members, students and parents. CSDE will provide public information to assist you with information sharing with stakeholders. This should begin with an initial brief overview of the system for district and school leaders and staff as well as board of education members and families. The introduction should include some general timelines for preparing for the system and resources necessary for that to happen. It will also be helpful to identify a district or school contact person for staff. You will want to create a plan specifically for communicating to parents over the next year. Your initial communications should be a brief overview of CT SEDS and timelines for implementing the new system. CSDE will be providing some critical resources for parents and families. It will be important for parents to know that not only will there be a new IEP form, but that they will have access to the system to view their child's documents. There will be an asynchronous self-paced training module in both English and Spanish available to them, as well as additional training conducted by the district and through the Connecticut Parent Advocacy Center, CPAC. It will be helpful to identify a district representative for parents to contact if they have questions. The department has been working on a robust system of resources and support to assist in the rollout of CT SEDS. This includes the quality IEP training, the user proficiency training and resources, and access to RESC and CERC IEP development specialists who can provide training and technical assistance. CPAC will also be available to provide training and answer questions that parents may have. In addition, the CSDE has established a website that will continually be updated with training information, question and answer documents, and other critical information. The link to that site is listed above. Now for your next steps. You will be provided with this recorded webinar to use with staff and leaders in your district. Your first step will be to assemble a district team that will include those with expertise in IEP content, data, and technology. The team will convene to create your district rollout plan. The CSDE has designed an action planning template that will assist you with this planning. The following resources will be posted on the CSDE website. This recorded presentation, the action plan template, and the draft IEP form template. We recommend reviewing these materials with district leaders and pupil services leaders to develop your action plan for implementing CT SEDS and the training components. You may reach out to any of your REST colleagues if you have questions on moving forward. We look forward to working with you and supporting you in the rollout of CT SEDS. Now we will open up for any final questions you may have 
or identification of additional resources you think you will need. Thank you and best wishes for a successful end to the school year.